and am I doing this February? Yes. Why? I still want to. Okay. Second time's the charm. That's not the same, but we're going with it because this is the second time filming this. First time, half of the video, like, got corrupted. So, <laughs> fingers crossed this camera works. Ha! Hi! My name is Carly. Welcome back or welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before. And today, I wanted to tear, way, tear rank every show I watched in 2022. So there is a total of 64 shows that include shows that I started in 2021 and, and finished in 2022, but it does not include shows that I started in 2022 and I finished in 2023 or shows that I DNF'd in 2022. That's the total of shows, 64 shows. I created a little Excel sheet to kind of because I wanted to. I wanted to see how many shows I watched, I wanted to see how many episodes, the breakdown of it all, because that was interesting to me to see where my interests lie. And it feels like, I feel like I mostly watch Asian dramas, uh, like Korean, Thai, Japanese, Taiwanese, um, there's just a mix in there, Chinese, um, and it feels like that's all I really watch. But when I did the breakdown, most of my shows came from Western countries. There was 25 shows from Western countries, with the next biggest one being Thai shows at 16. Um, which was really interesting, but I just did a little quick quick through and um, I get bored and I end up watching a bunch of like random, really random shows off of Netflix that are Western based, which is, I also counted because I watched those. Um, but I feel like it does end up feeling like I watch a lot of Asian based shows because of I think how many episodes, especially those Chinese shows, those things are like massive, massive. In total ended up watching 787 episodes, so that's probably why I feel like I watched way more like Asian shows than Western shows. But that episode count again does not include shows that I DNF'd because I just didn't include them in this list. But I broke it down by country and by B whether or not they were BLs. And like I said before, country, I had 25 that I considered Western, 16 that were Thai, 9 that were Korean, 6 that were Chinese, 2 Taiwanese, and 6 Japanese shows from last year, which is interesting. Like I said, the Western, big Western one is actually a bit of a surprise to me, but the other ones not so much. And I did a breakdown whether or not they were BL and 38 of them were not BL. Again, surprising because I feel like all I watch is like BL nowadays, but my interests have been evolving and I'm watching lots of different ones other than BLs now, uh, with 24 being BLs and two that I just did not really know how to categorize, I should say. Those are the breakdowns. Let's get into the tier ranking. Also, um, I will leave the link for this down below if you want to do it yourself for some reason. I also have a list of shows on my phone that I might be referencing through this video. <laughs> um, and so let's go through the tiers. First off, we've got the top tier, Save 2022. These were shows that were, oh, that doesn't need to go. These were shows that were amazing. I loved them. They, they saved 2022 shows for me. They were Next tier is Close But Not Quite. These were shows that I really, really enjoyed, but just for some reason or other, in my heart, they are not, they did not save 2022. They are still really good, but they are just, they just weren't that saved spot. Next one is Mid. I literally couldn't think of anything else, and these were just so-so. Not the worst, but absolutely not the best. After that is, I watched this, uh, because when I was making these lists, uh, there was literally a couple shows that I do not remember watching. <laughs> They're on my list, uh, on my Netflix shows that they I watched them, and I have literally no memory of watching them. So I watched this. And then the very final one is ones I should have dropped. These are shows that, as the name says, I should have dropped. I should have stopped watching this. Why did I put myself through watching this? They are not worth my time, and I get wrong my time. Now that that's done, let's begin with the tier ranking. So first off, we've got a business proposal. Um, I'm putting this one in close, but not quite. Just because this one was really good. There wasn't like my favorite, all-time favorite or anything, but I had a really fun time with them. All the characters were fun. I liked both the main couple and the side couple. And overall, it was just a light, fun, good time. There was, it's not that deep. <laughs> Next one is Alchemy Souls Part 
one. Again, this is going to be a close but not quite. I really enjoyed part one. I do kind of feel like 20 hour long episodes is a bit much for a K-drama. <laughs> there were definitely parts where I got really bored and it really slowed and it really lagged and you could tell. But overall, I really liked, I really, really liked it. The relationship between um, Mudok and Jungwook was ugh, so cute. I loved it. I loved the progression of it because of how much I loved part one. It actually part two was, spoiler alert, was disappointing to me and I didn't actually finish it. I just, uh, you didn't have Mudok. Next one is Bad and Crazy. Um, it's kind of a mix between close but not quiet and mid, but I think I'm gonna go mid with that one. Which is to say it wasn't bad, but it doesn't really stand out to me. There were good parts. The, um, what is it? The Stingray dance. <laughs> I don't know why that part just always sticks out in my mind, but we gotta do the Stingray dance. Next, we've got Bad Buddy. This is a close but not quite. Listen, the first, like, five episodes were fantastic. Like, the first half of the show, fan fantastic like each episode just kind of got better and better until it culminated into this like amazing rooftop kiss between the two and then after that I don't know what happened like if they had continued the trajectory that they were on this would have been save 2022 but that second half just was not nearly as strong as the first half and before that I can't it's a close but not quite it was almost there still recommended it was just uh, the second half. Just... Next one, Barry, season three. Close but not quite. Season three, I didn't have as good of a time with as I had with the previous two seasons, but overall, Barry is still like one of my top tier shows, and I would highly recommend it to anyone. It is the show that made me like put Bill Hader as like one of my top favorite actors. I absolutely love this show. It is so, so good. Take the trigger warnings, take them seriously, but like overall, it is. It's funny. It's emotional. It's all, I, each episode is only 30 minutes and they know what to do with those 30 minutes. And those are my favorite types of shows. So Barry, so good. But season 30 was mm, um, close, but not quite. But it's still one of my favorite shows. Big Dragon, I think it's Big Dragon. We're gonna go in the, uh, I watched this. I do remember watching this. I watched it towards the end of the last year. So like, I do remember watching it, but at the same time, maybe I shouldn't have watched this. It was, interesting for some reason i thought it was like a mafia based one again i don't know why but it wasn't and so that was kind of disappointing and then i didn't understand their relationship like the two leads i thought had good chemistry together but like they went from like not even hate fucking they went from trying to essay each other to like in love and i didn't understand that like jump <laughs> and i'm not even joking yeah anyway we're i watched this it could be I should have dropped, but I I don't, there are ones that I feel like I should have dropped and this was not one of them. This was just a very much like a, what? This one, is this? <laughs> yeah, Blooms at Yui Pavilion. It's a Chinese drama. Uh, close, but not quite. This doesn't feel quite as like a save 2022 level, but I really enjoyed this one. I had a great time with it. It was just a light, fluffy romance. It wasn't quite, what is it, martial arts, but it had that feel to it. You had people flying around. <laughs> That's always fun to me. Those are always fun to me. And so that gets a close but not quite. I had a really good time with it, but it's not like the most memorable thing ever, but it was still, it was still really good. I really liked it. This one is blooming, right? Yeah, this is one of those, like I watched this. We're gonna go mid. Not because I watched this as like the ones I forgot about, but also not that great. Blooming is not, like I kind of forgot I watched it, but it was, it was mid. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It kind of just falls in that middle part. It was cute. It was soft. It was light. And it was kind of unmemorable. So mid. Catching Killers. Um, I think I put this in the different one last time, but now I'm gonna go and watch this because um, I, I don't really have memories of watching this. I think I think this was just about them catching how they caught serial killers. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I, I, I go through like true crime phases, okay? We don't need to talk about it. Next one, Cheer, season two. Um, <laughs> I watched this. Season one, I think, had us all gripped, like, in its grass. It definitely had me. I loved it. Season two did not have the same appeal. So, I watched this. Cupid's Last Wish, uh, mid. It, I liked it. I think I liked it more than it seems a lot of other people did. But it still wasn't amazing. 
I think we all watched it for Earth and Mix because I know that's why I watched it. But it was something to hold us over between A Tale of a Thousand Stars and Moonlight Chicken, which is going to be super soon. I'm so excited. It was, <laughs> Moonlight Chicken's going to ruin me. Anyway, it, it was it was fine. It, it is what it is. Dairy Girls, the new season. I don't remember what that is. Um, Close, but not quite. Dairy Girls was always a fun time. The only thing that kind of really disappointed me was more that I wish... It, it wasn't that type of show, but I kind of wish there was more continuing, like more of a bit of a storyline between each episode. I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. But I had a really good time with it when I found out that the last season was the last season. I was actually really sad, so. Moving on. Next one is Enchanté. Uh, mid. Again, I think this is like Cuba's Last Wish War. I think I enjoyed this more than a lot of other people. Um, but it wasn't like anything super special. I just, I thought it was really cute and it was one of those shows that whenever I put it on I felt relaxed and calm and a lot of shows don't really do that. So Enchanté was, was one of those shows. It was fine. But it like brought me a peace of mind whenever I watched it and I enjoyed that. Extraordinary Attorney Wu. Doesn't even show her on there. Close, but not quite. I actually tried to watch this a few months ago when it was like airy and it was really big and I just, I couldn't do it. I watched like the 20 minutes of the first episode and then was like, I can't do this right now. Mainly because I felt like the autistic rep of the main character was really stereotypical and that was really hard for me to get through. And even once I did watch it, it was still not my favorite part. But once I got watching it and um, I just like couldn't stop. Each episode was really easy to like just breeze through. I didn't feel like I was sitting there watching a show for like an hour long, <laughs> which sometimes a lot of these uh, Korean shows, the episodes, I do feel like I'm like, okay, this doesn't need to be an hour, an hour and a half. And I didn't feel like that with this show. It just it wasn't a safe 2022 because of the, like I said, how I just felt. And the fact that I, when I first tried to watch it, I couldn't, I just couldn't get myself to. So close, but not quite. It was a fun, good time, but mm, next one. Great British baking show, mid. Yeah, I, I keep watching each new season and each new season is such a disappointment to me. I like, when I first started watching the show a few years ago, it was such a, like a comfort show to me. I loved it and then each new season just does not bring that spark and I keep watching it thinking of that spark and I'm not getting it. So maybe I just need to say goodbye to this show. With that said, uh, I cannot forgive the contestant that uh, was peeling an avocado like a potato. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? 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 I know it's an accident thing, but tacos? Tacos? Tacos. Tacos. Not tacos. And you don't peel an avocado like a, like, like a potato. I, wow. Wow. Gen Y2 should have dropped. Don't watch it. It's not good. It's really bad. Don't watch it. <laughs> don't watch it. JVN. Uh, it's a mix between mid and I watch this. It could, we're going to go mid because I do love JVN. But don't really remember watching the show, but I, I liked the idea of teaching me stuff. I like learning stuff. Yeah, I don't really remember it, and I think what I do kind of remember is that I felt like the episode should have been a little bit longer, so I could have learned more. Next one, Guardian. We're gonna go with mm, mid. This was in my COVID vlog, I talked about this a little more. It was fine. I liked the male leads the most, which is why I continued watching, but I was kind of confused, and if I hadn't liked the male leads as much, I probably wouldn't have continued. What is this? Hawkeye. Yeah, the Disney Plus show. Mid. It was fine. Hawkeye it's actually one of my favorite, it's my, is my favorite superhero from the comics. And ugh, they just do not bring the same Hawkeye to the show and the movies. And it's always so disappointing. So it is mid. Heartstopper. Oh, I feel like it was a save. No, there's other ones that I feel like are safe. But Heartstopper is close to being a save. Heartstopper, the comics, I've been reading since like near the beginning. I didn't even realize it. I've been reading them since pretty much the beginning. I'm not caught up, but man, I freaking love no, they are so cute. Such a feel good thing. Highly recommend to everyone. And the show was like spot on for the comics in the best way possible. So good. I'm so excited for more. And fun fact, they went to Paris like right after I had been in Paris. And so me and like all my groups, like all my friends that were part of like friend, like, like Tardstopper were just like, no, they were, they're there where we just were. <laughs> and we interview with the vampire. Ooh, ooh. I think I put it in save last time, but I don't know that it's a save. 
Mm. Oh, this is hard. Okay. Uh, let's go close, but not quite with this one this time. I really liked Interview with a Vampire, with the Vampire. Like, really liked it. Did not think I would like it as much, and then I saw all the stuff on Tumblr, and I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot, and then watched it, and really, really liked it. I don't have much else to say. It was just a good time. <laughs> it was a mess in the best way possible. And I don't mean that in like storytelling way, I mean they were both messy people and it was fun to watch them just like self-destruct each other. Themselves and each other. I can't wait for the next season. This one, Kai, Kai X Yaku. We're gonna go with I Watch This. Again, not that bad, but I feel like it was more advertised as like a BL and it's not. And so I was waiting for them to get together and they never got together. And then on top of that, disappointment of them not actually getting together because spoiler alert they didn't get together uh sorry about that but they uh i was not captivated by the story i don't know i was so bored like getting myself to watch this was um a struggle it was really a struggle <laughs> so i watched this next one ken porsche save 2022 i have no words was this like the most amazing thing ever made ever no did i have like the most amazing time watching it yes and that's what matters seriously this was i'd been waiting for this for so long and did not disappoint um that i had so much fun with it like i remember every saturday i would like not go on tumblr so that i wouldn't get spoiled and then i finally watched it about 3 p.m my time and then once i watched it i would then go and like talk to my friends about it on tumblr and we would it was so much fun like that i was so sad when the show ended just so, because of like that community aspect but also the show itself like i could sit there and watch the whole basically hour-long episode without like having to check my phone which does not happen very often and the fact that i could with this show tells you how much i enjoyed had an enjoyable time so yeah it saved 2022. this one life after death uh it could be i should have dropped but it's also like and i watched this because this is what this tier was for where i literally I do remember kind of watching it now, but at the time when I made this list, I was like, what is that show? I watched a lot of random stuff. Next one, Lock and Key. We're going mid. There's only three seasons and I watched every season. And each time I watched it, I was kind of like, why am I watching this? Why am I doing this to myself? But I was then, I would totally forget about that feeling. And then the next season come out, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to watch that. And then I'd start watching it and be like, why am I doing this to myself? And then when I found out season three was the last one, I was like, thank goodness, because why do I keep doing that myself? Was it bad? No, but I'm just not, it's like one of those just teenage drama shows that personally is just not really my thing. It's mid, it's fine. I don't know why I kept watching it for myself personally. Ooh, this one. Love Between Fairy and Devil. Save 2022. Listen, if you're gonna watch like any Chinese show, Fairy and Devil is the one to watch. I could not stop watching it. I like bit, would binge it. It was so good and that doesn't happen often where I just like sit and watch episodes, especially Chinese shows. This one, I could. I, oh my god. The leads were so cute. Um, I loved their like body swapping moments. I loved, I loved everything about this show. It was beautiful to look at. It was, I loved their acting. They were so cute together. I oh, loved it. It was so good. This one, what is this one? Um, Love in the Air. I should have dropped it. Anyway, we're on um, talking about Love in the Air. A lot of people love this. I was not one of those people. So watching it because I just wanted to watch a trash show. Show because sometimes you just want to watch trash shows. And then this proved to be a little too trashy for me. But then I went to my grandma's and was having an awful time for various personal mental reasons and decided just to continue watching it to give myself something to do. But I shouldn't have watched it. I should not have continued the show. I hadn't, I did not have that great of a time with it. It was bad. I'm sorry. Not a favorite. Moving on. Love Like the Galaxy. It's gonna be mid. Listen, it's like 56 episodes, which I think is just a little too long for this show. And it's like split up into two parts. And the first part, loved it. So good, so cute. Um, I was, I found it funny. I loved all the characters. And I really, really enjoyed that. Part two, I understand where they went with more political, but then all I was kept watching because I just wanted that main couple to be happy in a relationship and happy with each other. And it kept going like, ooh, they're going to be in that relationship. They're going to finally get married. And then something would happen and the marriage would just throw off. And they did that like multiple times to the point that I was like, God, just like, stop with the conflict. Stop with the conflict. This is too long. Stop with the conflict. Let it be over. Let the two be happy and in love. So the second half was like so much harder for me to get through um, than the first half. If it stayed kind of if like the first half, then it would be a close, but not quite. But I just was not the biggest fan of the part two. That got really, it got too much for me. <laughs> this one, um, 
love mechanics not in love mechanics love mechanics actual show <sighs> i think i'm gonna need to put it in a close one quite it's between that and mid but love mechanics how do I explain this? And in love, don't watch. The like the only one worth watching is Love Mechanics, and you've got a full episode of that. So just don't don't even bother with in of love stuff. Love Mechanics was the best. One. Is it like the best one in terms of like material? Jeez, how do I explain it? Look at the trigger warnings and decide for yourself, okay? Because it's like <laughs> just exposing myself. It's a mess, but it's still better than whatever the heck the other two ones were. The fact that this got a full release, I was all on. And I loved it. I had such a good time with it. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. I thought everyone did a fantastic job with their acting. I liked the connection between the male leads. And yeah, I already knew I would like it. And I did. And it didn't disappoint. What is this one? Mama Go Go. <gasps> yeah, close but not quite. This one, if you want to watch all your favorite GMM TV actors try to be strippers, this is the show for you. Cringy. Yes. Lots of fun. Yes. I loved like all the relationships, especially the main one, like older woman, younger man. Oh my God. I didn't think I'd be as into it, but I was so into it. I loved it. It was such a fun time. If only you, if you only ever watched Thai BLs, like check this one out. It was, it's not a BL, but it's still a lot of fun. Would recommend. I'm going to put these ones together, but it's the man who defies BL1 and 2. It's going mid. If it did more with its material, I think it could be a close, but not quite. But it didn't. It was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I, it was a lot of fun. It's about a guy basically stuck in a BL world and he's not like a BL like character or something. So he's kind of like an NPC kind of thing living through this all. Everyone's falling in love around him. And so it has like a f very funny premise. And it was a lot of fun to watch, but they just didn't really go anywhere with it. Mr. Unlucky has no choice but to kiss. Kind of forgot about this one. We're going mid. It was cute and it was a lot of fun. Japanese BLs, I just know for like their over the topness, which is always kind of what I want when I watch them. So yeah, this kind of fell under that category and I enjoyed it. I don't feel like I have anything really else to say. This one. Ooh, this was one I <laughs> can remember. Uh, My Secret Love, I think, based on this reaction I just had, uh, it needs to go in the eye watch this. Listen, I like this more than I thought, but truthfully, I only really like the main couple. And even then, was it enough to like save this show? It was fine. It was okay. I don't know. I kind of forgot about it. Like I forgot I was watching it when I was watching it. Like I'm waiting for the new episodes and then I'd be like, oh, there was an episode. And then I might let it pile up for a couple weeks before. I would then go and watch the episode before. I actually felt like watching it and like I only finished it because I had already started it. So it could be I should drop the dropped, but uh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was just very mediocre. My tooth, your love, right? My tooth, you love. My tooth, your love. Uh, mid. It was cute. It was fine. I don't don't have really strong feelings towards it. I just, I did really enjoy it. My favorite part though, I can never remember our main character's name, so you're just gonna bear with me, but there was a scene where the dentist had already like kind of confessed his love and then the other guy had freaked out and ran away from it. And then like later that episode or the next episode, the other guy was like, oh crap, like I do actually like him. I'm gonna go confess. And then he does. And then the dentist is like, what do you expect me to do? Like, I'll uh, just to be fine. Like you ran away from me when I confessed my feelings. And like, why should I accept it now? Cause you hurt me when you did that. And that was, I really enjoyed that scene. Like I've never seen a scene like that. And I really enjoyed it to acknowledge that like how you want someone run away from you when you confess your feelings hurts you. And for him to be like, yeah, that's, that wasn't okay. Um, was really, was like actually really cool to see. And it was like, I think it was like a one shot with them just like walking down like these streets, crossing roads and stuff. It was filmed really cool. And I really enjoyed like, like that kind of conversation about it. I mean, they do get their happy ending, but like, yeah, I really enjoyed it being like, I still like you, but you hurt me. And I'm not going to just like accept it and think that it's okay for you to have done that. Like you need to look at yourself. So yeah, really enjoyed the show for doing that, bringing that up. Mystic pop-up bar. A mid. I put it, I, you already saw that I put it in mid. It was fine. It was fun. I cried during like a couple episodes, I think it was. It was a good show. I'm just kind of trying to go through like my list of stuff that's been sitting there and that I haven't watched yet. Um, and that just kind of was one of those shows. Uh, it was cute. I would recommend it. It just wasn't like the most amazing, spectacular thing I've ever seen in my life, but I did really enjoy it. So nailed it. Halloween. It is going to go mid only because I wish there were more episodes, uh, but nailed it just as a general is, is a cute, it's fun. I have a lot of fun with that show. 
It's not like the most spectacular thing I've ever seen, but it's a lot of fun. Never have I ever. Um, men. I know I said with a lock and key I don't really care for those like teenage drama shows but I do actually really enjoy Never Have I Ever. It's ridiculous. It's kind of stupid. You kind of want to smack the teenagers around because you're like why do you keep doing this? Um, but they're also teenagers so I guess it's kind of understandable. Anyway I have a lot of fun with it and I get excited whenever there's a new season so mid. This one might be a little controversial. It's not me and I personally think I'm gonna put it in mid. Sorry, let, let the Afghan fans stands come for me. But as a general thing, I, I don't know what it is, but Afghan just does not like click with me in the same way it seems to click with everyone else. And Not Me itself is a good show, one of the better BLs, do not get me wrong. But at the same time, I was not like frothing at the mouth over the show. It was, it was fine. I kind of watched it just because of the hype and everyone else was watching it but truth be told if there wasn't had hadn't really been that hype and stuff I might not have really checked it out to be quite honest with you so yeah remember this is all personal opinion uh, next one old-fashioned cupcake we're going mid I really enjoyed it again this mid section I knew was gonna be big but anyway it's really good it's not a close but not quite but it's it's fine it, it was really cute I liked that it talked about becoming older and still like enjoying things and I liked that it wasn't like, completely over the top ridiculous like a lot of Japanese BLs tend to be but it wasn't like it just it didn't quite hit the niche that I needed to be higher. Our flag means death. Save 2022. I think I binged all these episodes in one day and I did not actually plan to do that. Uh, really good. I'm still like obsessed with it months and months months later. Um, I cannot wait for season two. Loved it. Paint with love I think this was. It's going mid. Yeah, I just wasn't impressed with like anyone's acting in this. It was kind of boring. It was fine. It was a fine show. I wanted more from it and we'll get into it later, but the actor, I don't know who played opposite of Cinto, I was, I don't know, I didn't like him in this show. And then there's another show on here that I actually really liked him in, but I almost didn't watch that show because I didn't like how much I did not like him in um, Paint With Love. And then the side couple, Yacht and Yoon, I, I was not the biggest fan of this show. <laughs> I just wasn't. Peacemaker. Honestly, I think it's going to be a close, but not quite. I really enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I did. Well, actually, I thought I would enjoy this a lot. I really enjoyed it. It was funny. It was ridiculous. Yeah, really enjoyed it. <laughs> this is coming from like a non-DC watcher and I don't really do superhero movie stuff anymore. Really liked Peacemaker. This one, plus and minus. I think it's mid. It's kind of in between close but not quite, but I don't think it's in that level yet. But I really liked it. Um, I'm such a big sucker for like friends to lovers and that's what this was. And I, yeah, it was cute. Um, Queer Eye. Um, honestly, mid. Queer Eye itself is such a feel good show to me but I feel like the episodes are not long enough and before I can get like that warm comfy cozy feeling that I like remember getting from it it's like it's over and that's really disappointing to me oh god let's let's fix this for myself raincoat killer this is what this tier was made for because I have it on here my Netflix shows that I watched it I literally have no memory of watching this so that's all I'm gonna say on that roommates of Pondok 304 I probably pronounced that wrong uh, mid. One of the better KBLs, I would say, but it wasn't anything super duper special. I like the main couple, and that's kind of where that needs to stay. Russian Doll, season two. We're talking season two. I should have dropped it. Season one, fantastic, magnificent. Oh my god, I love that season so much. Season two, what the hell happened? Seriously, what happened? Season two sucked. I like sped through every episode. What happened? Moving on. School of Chocolate mid I, again it's just one of those shows i turned on to watch and i watched it i don't really have anything special to say on it this one is a secret crush on you i think this next one is yeah secret crush on you it's mid i liked it just fine at the beginning and then it just started dragging towards the end i liked that they took a lot of popular bl tropes and like basically made fun of them that was really fun to watch but it just got old really quickly <laughs> and so by the end i was just like Again, only watching it because I had already started it. Is this semantic error? Yes. I know I had to look, but this is a saved 2022. If you're gonna only watch it, like 1KBL, semantic error is the one. It's so good. It's so good. It's so worth the hype. <laughs> My favorite part of it, again, I can never remember main char characters' names, but where the two characters, one of the characters doesn't like to be touched without like people telling him first. And so the other character, 
even before they get together, like, always asks him if he want, like, asks him beforehand before touching once he knows about this. Or there'll be cute little episodes where he'll just, like, grab, like, the sleeve and, like, drag him along where he wants to go. Or he'll grab, like, backpack straps and, like, drag him along. But he's never, like, once the what other character stated that he doesn't like to be touched, other character, uh, stop, like, didn't touch him unless he asked first. And I, it was just like a small thing that I really, really appreciated and enjoyed seeing in a show. Uh, this one, I can never remember. Sky in your heart. I can never remember because it's close to, it's like the second part of this series or whatnot. And I, you know, the first part. So it's going, I should have watched this because it's not like I should have dropped it, but it's like a tale of a thousand stars knockoff. Sorry, but it is. Stranger Things season four. We're only close, but not quite because um, killing Eddie was an absolute mistake. There was no need for that. Sweet Home. Yeah, honestly, I should have dropped this. Uh, I wanted something that would give me the same vibes that um, Strangers from Hell gave me, which is so freaking good. And <laughs> so good. And Sweet Home, I thought, would give me those vibes. And they didn't. And I was mostly confused trying to watch the show. I should have dropped it. I shouldn't have continued. Uh, Love Between Romance and Tiger. This is, yeah, we're going to go saved because it's on the same realm as like Fairy and Devil and that it was just a lot of fun. It was really cute. I could not stop watching it. I had a lot of fun with it. It was it was really, really good. Umbrella Academy. Close, but not quite. Listen, first season Umbrella Academy is magnificent. Anything else after that has been a little eh, which isn't a bad thing, but I keep thinking I want that same level as season one. And it's just season two and season three have just not reached that yet. They're still really good. Still really like the show. Witcher. Uh, season two, I should have dropped. Uh, I hate The Witcher show. Why do I keep watching it? Um, I like the game, which I've only played Witcher 3, and I really like the game. I'm currently reading the books, and I am actually really enjoying the books, but this show, man, I do not like it. I just need to stop watching it. Henry Cavell is great. I like Yaskier. My big thing is, I don't think the actress I got from Yennefer fits the role, and her relationship with Ger Henry Cavill's Geralt is so weird to me. I don't like it at all. Yeah, that's, yeah. Triage. Uh, close but not quite. Yeah, triage. Really, really good. This is the one, where has the actor from Paint With Love that I almost didn't watch triage because I had that actor. Um, but I really, really liked him in triage. And I really liked the time loopness of it and the relationships. Um, there's definitely parts that felt really rushed, especially at the end and like the side relationship. I When did that start? But overall, triage, such a good time. Such a good show. Unsolved Mysteries, mid. I loved it. My mom and I love watching this show together. <laughs> um, I really like it, but it's not like anything against Spectacular that realms anything higher than mid. This one, what is this? Oh, now we got the real up. Oh god, okay. You, you Kushi Kare, I'm mispronouncing that. Honestly, we're gonna go, I've watched this. The relationship is between like this guy who's like idolizes another guy and then the other guy is almost like his bully, but then they end up liking each other. I probably explained that really wrong, but that's how I like personally felt about like what the show is about. <laughs> Who rules the world is mid. I wanted something, I expected something different from the show than I got and that was a little disappointing, so mid. Worst roommate ever. Um, again, I watched this. I guess I do remember watching this. It's just not that true crime show I watched. And this one, You're My Sky. We're going I watch this. Not that it was like a really bad show because it wasn't. Cinematography, it was absolutely beautiful. But I don't actually remember watching this. <laughs> again, it's lit I, like I do. But when I was going through my list, I was like, I watched this show. What is what was the show again? So it's not very memorable. But it was cute for what it was. Anyway, I need to drink some water after talking for so long. This is my ranking of my 2022 shows. I will leave the link to this below. Um, let me know if you agree or disagree or want me to like expand further on some of my thoughts because I know I'm like racing through it right now. I'm kind of done of talking. That was a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if you agree, disagree, whatever. I want to hear your thoughts. And again, we'll link this um, list below if you for some reason want to take it. Thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun with this video. Um, I hope this recording works this time. If you liked it, leave a comment, subscribe, whatever. I don't know. And yeah, it's, my mind's not working right now. Okay, uh, I'm gonna leave. This is over. The video's done. Bye. <laughs>